Hey guys and thanks for tuning in again. In my first YouTube video I showed you how you can build this DIY clock kit. It has been working great since then and it even has a built-in battery for keeping the time and date. The only problem is that it needs a constant 5 volts in order for it to actually show that time. I decided to make a few modifications and to create a circuit that can run the clock off a 18650 battery and that can also charge that battery using a micro USB cable. And with the help of JLC PCB, who are the sponsors of this video, I got my board printed and shipped in no time. As you can see from my schematic, I'm using a micro USB port as the main power source. The TP4056IC takes care of charging the 18650 cell. The DW01G IC in conjunction with the FS8205A MOSFET package IC are there to protect the battery from over discharging which could lead to damage to the cell. And finally, the MT3608 IC boosts the 3 to 4.2 volts of the battery to a stable 5 volts that can be used to power our DIY clock. I use the recommended supporting component values for each IC. The R6 resistor value can be found in the TP4056 datasheet and a value of 2K ohms will limit the charging of the battery to around 500 milliamps. The values for the R8 and R7 resistors are used to set the output voltage of the MT3608 IC. These are calculated using the formula in the datasheet. I used values 7.5K and 1K because when you divide 7500 by 1000 plus 1 times 0.6, you get a value of 5.1 volts, which is perfect for our case. I use the Easy EDA free online software to create the schematic and board design and I'll show you how you can order your boards from JLC PCB who have agreed to sponsor this video and provided me with the boards and necessary components from lcsc.com. When you open up the PCB design in Easy EDA, you have to click on the Gerber output button in the software. Next, click on the download Gerber files. Now head on to jlcpcb.com and click on the Quote Now button. Upload your Gerber file and you should see how your finished PCB will look like. Below you can edit the quantity, thickness, colors, etc. I went with the default settings mostly, only changing the color to blue because I think it looks nicer. When you're done, click on the Save to Cart button. After that, you can go to the checkout page, enter your shipping and payment information, and when you're done, you can expect your PCBs to arrive very shortly. After waiting for about a week, my boards and components have finally arrived. I must say that I'm quite happy with the overall quality of the print and want to thank JLC PCB once again for making this video possible. It's now time to solder all the SMD components in place. I'm not going to do a detailed video on how to solder SMD because honestly this was my first time working with this technology. I'll link two videos in the description from Great Scott and EEV blog about how to solder SMD that really helped me out a lot. I'm just gonna leave you with a quick montage of how I soldered all the parts myself. I was really nervous when I started because the components are so damn small. But after soldering the first few components it really isn't that difficult. If I can do it, and you'll see that I don't have the steadiest hands in the world, I think anyone can solder SMD without issues. The only thing I can say with certainty is to use a flux pan, as it helps a lot with soldering, and get some isopropyl alcohol to wipe the board clean after you've done soldering.
I use this 18650 battery holder as the base of my project. You can find the links to the components used, schematics, Gerber files and Easy EDA project in the video description. After all the soldering was done, it was time to test out my project. After switching the module on, you can see that we get a constant 5 volts on the output pins. Connecting a load to the output doesn't break down the voltage, which is also good news. When I connected the micro USB port to a phone charger, the red LED light came up and the battery started charging. If I remove the battery or the voltage reaches 4.2 volts, the green LED lights up. After utilizing a bit of hot glue, I glued the PCB to the battery holder and then the battery holder to the back of the clock. I inserted the battery, turned on the switch and voila! My DIY clock is running off a single 18650 cell. I'm really happy that this project worked out from the first try. I'd like to thank JLC PCB once again for sponsoring this video. Please like, share and subscribe to see more awesome videos like this and by doing so you're really helping me grow my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers!